In this demo, we're going to show you how to create beautiful dashboards like this from your IoT data in just a few minutes. Our use case for this demo is water on roads, which can cause real chaos. So when big roads are built, often a gully or sump is built next to them into which the water can quickly flow and then be slowly pumped out afterwards. So at each site, we have a sump, in it a pump, which takes energy to pump the water, and then a rain collector, which measures how much it's raining. There are four numbers associated with each site. Sump level, the amount of water in the sump. Sump limit, which is how full the sump can get before it overflows. Sump pump energy, which is the amount of energy consumed by the pump. And precipitation intensity, which tells us about rainfall. All these values are collected in real time by a wireless gateway, which sends them over the internet to the cloud. So the first thing to do with our new device pilot account is to connect it to that cloud and get hold of the data. In this case, the data happens to be in the AWS IoT cloud, so we're going to show you how easy it is to integrate with that. Referring to your AWS account, you just need to put in your endpoint and your account number. And then we give you instructions as to how to create a policy in your AWS IoT account, which allows Device Pilot to see the data in that account and also to extract a private key and a certificate from your AWS IoT account, which you then paste into Device Pilot to allow it to connect. And as soon as you've done that, Device Pilot connects, and then it can take up to a couple of minutes for the data to start flowing into Device Pilot, and you're integrated. So let's go and look at the data. The first thing we see in the top left of the view page is a list of the devices. And if we select one of them, we can then see all the individual messages we're getting from that device. Each message has a unique ID, a unique timestamp, and then whatever properties the device is sending. Now that level of detail is probably a bit more than you need for most purposes. So we're going to close that window and then notice up at the top of the page, there are little buttons that let you turn on and off all the different windows on this page to show different aspects of the devices that you're looking at. On the right hand side, we see the details window, which shows every detail of this device. We can select another device and see the details of that device. Each device has a unique ID. We see when it was last seen and first seen. And then in this case, it's got a whole load of address properties that tell us where it is. We have uh, firmware versions, we have its latitude and longitude, and we have the various bits of telemetry which we're collecting, the precipitation intensity, the sump level, and so on. One of the other windows we can turn on is a map. So by selecting a device, we can immediately see where that device is. Device Pilot also stores all the data that's sent to it, so we can see how values on a device change over time. So here, if we set up the history chart to show us three different properties that we're interested in. The first one is the precipitation intensity, how much it's raining at the moment. The next one is the uh, level in the sump, how full our sump is. And the final one will be the energy that the sump uh, pump consumes. So if we select all those three and say save changes, then on the history chart, we'll see how those values have changed over time. Up at the top of the screen, we can set the time range that we're interested in. If we set that to 14 days, then we can see how these three values have changed over the last 14 days for the currently selected device. Here we can see the rainfall level, the level in the sump and the energy consumed by the pump changing continuously over that time. And if we choose another device, we can see its behavior, which has been completely different. So perhaps we'd like to see these values on the list next to the devices. So let's choose some of the device properties to show on that list. The administrative area, one of the address values. What else have we got? Let's show the precipitation intensity, the level of the sump, the limit of the sump, and how much energy is being consumed by the pump. Now we've got all of these extra properties on our list, we can even sort by them. So if we sort by sump level, we can see the devices that have the most full sump. And here we have the one in Kefili where the sump is clearly uh, filling up. If we now zoom in and only look at three days, the last three days, we can see that it's been raining continuously, the sump has been filling up continuously, the pump is running at 2.7 kilowatts continuously trying to empty the sump, but it doesn't look like it's having much luck. 
So let's try and filter all the, for all the devices that are in that state. So the way we create a filter is we just say create filter, we give it a name. So let's call this one pump running flat out. And then the filter simply says uh, that's true if the some pump, pump energy consumption is more than, let's say, 2.6 kilowatts. And that's true for 10 of our 20 devices right now. So if we save changes, we then see just those pumps that are running flat out on our uh, list. Let's create another filter which detects other conditions that we might care about. In this case, we want to discover sumps that are overflowing. So in this case, we'll define that as the sump level property being greater than or equal to the sump limit property. And we see that seven of our 20 devices are currently in that state. So filters are just a very useful way to select devices according to their state at any moment in time. So now let's move to the cohort page to do slightly more sophisticated analyses. And now we're going to try and find out what the maximum value of any sump has been over a certain time period. Notice at the top it says 24 hours, so that's the time period. So we're asking what's the maximum value that the sump of any device has got to over the last 24 hours? And the answer is 15.1 millimeters. Let's extend that back to the last 30 days and run the, the question again. And it's still 15.1 millimeters. So that means over the last 30 days, no device has got more, no sump has got more full than 15.1 millimeters. To look in that a little bit more detail, if we want to know how full sumps have got over time, what's the maximum value over time, hour by hour, over the last 30 days, we can just group by time. And if we're wondering how that splits up by, by region, for example, or by country, we can just group by that as well. And if we change it to be a, a more of a, a bar chart rather than a line chart, we can see that it's uh, recently the ones in the United Kingdom that have been overflowing, not the ones in Netherlands. So we can name that as maximum sump levels and save it. So we now have what's called a KPI, uh, which we can then use again in other contexts. Let's create another KPI. In this case, we're going to just measure the mean, the average value of precipitation, how much is raining. And again, we're going to group by country and uh, group by hour. Change it so that it's over the last 30 days again. So this basically says per country, how hard has it been raining on average over the last 30 days? And again, we'll give that a name so we can use it later. And save it. Let's create another KPI. This time the metric we're going to use is a slightly more sophisticated one, which is measuring the percentage of time where some filter is true. So remember that pump running flat out filter that we defined earlier on? Well, this is going to measure how often any pump is running flat out over a period of time. And again, split by country and this time grouped by week. And so what this shows us is that actually it's the pumps in the Netherlands that have had the biggest problems, quite a big problem at the beginning of this month and then another one at the end. So let's name that as percentage of time pump running flat out. And save it. And then just one more KPI that we might be interested in. How much is this all costing us? So let's create a KPI which is all about the amount of energy that's being used by those pumps. And so we're measuring instantaneous power at time intervals. So if we sum those values, we actually get energy over time, kilowatt hours. And so we're measuring the total amount of uh, power consumption or energy consumption by our pumps over the last 30 days split by country again. 
And in this case, we can actually stack the columns because um, they're, they're, it's a sum, so we can um, stack the results to get the total amount of energy consumed by our pumps by day uh, over the last 30 days. I'll call that pump energy. So now we've got all these KPIs, we're ready to do the final bit, which is to put them all together into a dashboard. When you first set up your device pilot account, device pilot creates a few widgets on the dashboard to help you get going, uh, but we're going to unlock the dashboard and delete most of these because they're not things that we happen to want. We'll leave the map widget though, we'll just drag it over to the left. All the widgets on the dashboard are fully interactive, so you can you can click into things that are on the map and see clustered devices and individual devices. And here it's showing you the identity, the ID of each device. But we can make it do other things as well. So we could say, well, on the map, I want you to show me one of those KPIs, like what is the maximum level of each sump bean, um, and also show a tooltip when I hover over it, like uh, what is its administrative area, for example. And we can give the widget a name, maximum sump levels over the last 30 days. So let's change the KPI to be 30 days, not 24 hours. Now let's go in and have a look at the ones in the Netherlands just for fun. And now we see that as we hover, we're actually seeing the, the sump levels. So these are live sump levels, um, well, live uh, maximum over the last 30 days. Everything on the dashboard is live all the time and updating. Let's create another widget. And in this case, we'll show one of our KPIs. Uh, we want to do the rainfall by location. So we just choose the matching KPI. And again, set the time period to 30 days. It's often helpful if you choose the same time period for everything on each dashboard, just so it's consistent. Otherwise, it can be a bit confusing. And here we see that, that KPI that we created earlier, all nicely uh, positioned on the dashboard and, and fully interactive and so on. And we can do the same thing with the other KPIs we created. So how much pump energy is being used by country over time. the maximum levels that any sumps have got to over time. And the percentage of time that the pump is running flat out, so we're in danger of not clearing the sump. Actually, I've just realized that we forgot to create a KPI for what I wanted to do for the final widget. So let's go back to the cohort page and create a new KPI, which again is percentage of time, but it's a percentage of time where the sump is overflowing. And again, let's split it by country and by day. And let's just have a look to see what that KPI will look like before we go to the dashboard. looks good let's turn it into bars let's not turn it into bars let's give it a name and turn it into bars and save it so now we can go to our oh, we have to remember to unlock the dashboard again so we can change it give the widget a title choose the uh, sump overflow KPI save changes and we've got our dashboard and remember you can have multiple dashboards you can put them on the walls of your office everyone can see them and they update live so anyone will be knowing what's going on in your business all the time
not only are they live, but they're actually interactive. So you can click through from the dashboard to go and have a look at that KPI in more detail. And then you can actually click through from the KPI to see one bar's worth of devices selected and go and look at them in more detail. So these are the devices that were in that part of the KPI. And now we define some KPIs, we can actually see KPIs in the view page as well. So as well as seeing individual telemetry values, we can also see these derived metrics that DevicePilot is calculating for us, such as rainfall by location. And because they're in the same list, we can then sort by them uh, and do all sorts of other interesting exploration. So if we choose pump energy and we choose to sort by pump energy, then at the end of the list will be the device with the most pump consumption. And indeed, we see one of our old friends there with the with the sump just continuing to uh, get uh, deeper and deeper, even as the pump carries on running. So I hope that's shown you how in about a quarter of an hour, we've gone from uh, fresh data ingested in device pilot into having uh, a really quite nice, uh, good looking, meaningful, useful dashboard that everyone in the company can use to do their job. So just to recap what we've seen, we've seen device properties, the raw telemetry that comes in from the devices. We then seen how we can use filters to identify devices where the properties are in a particular state. We've then seen how we can use those filters and properties to build KPIs that tell us the key metrics that we care about and how they change over time. And finally, we've seen how to combine those KPIs onto good looking interactive dashboards. Thanks so much for watching. Contact us today to get working on your first device pilot dashboards.